The movie starts off with a family celebrating Christmas and they all seem elated. It's 1944 and thus the family of four have a nice warm dinner after the celebration. They all start praying when the little girl asks the reason for their prayer. When her grandfather answers that it's thanking God for taking care of them, she counters saying that God is not because her father isn't with them. Her mother asks her to be quiet but she continues saying that she knows her father will never return. This angers her mother and she slaps the little girl right across the face. This creates tension in the atmosphere and the once happy environment becomes dull and cold. The little girl cries herself to sleep as her mother tries to console her. The little girl adds that she doesn't even remember what her father looks like, causing her mother to reminisce about the moments she spent with her husband. It almost seems like a dream turned into a nightmare. The woman, whose name is Iron, seems to be living a wonderful life with her husband who's a soldier. He was sent to war but never returned. One day, Iron sees an army walk past her neighborhood. The army wants to take her for husking maize apparently, but she knows something's wrong. Iron's mother doesn't want her to go, but if she doesn't then the army would forcefully take another family member. Anyone who tries to escape is shot. Iron's mother is terrified but agrees nonetheless. Iron dresses up in warm clothes and bids her family goodbye. Iron's daughter isn't happy with Iron leaving. She runs away knowing both her parents are in places from where they might never return. Iron tries to console her but fails. Her father tells her he'll take good care of Iron's daughter and urges her to go. A Russian soldier takes her away and as Iron's daughter screams for her to not leave, the Russian soldier shows no mercy and pushes Iron to keep walking. A group of Hungarian women are headed to an unknown place by the Russians. All the women have tears falling from their faces as they might never see their family again. Iron is extremely distressed as well but keeps on. The Russian soldiers mistreat a girl who's deaf but Iron befriends her. They tread on together. Iron hands the deaf girl some bread. The other women recognize Iron as the pastor's daughters and contemplate what she's doing here. Iron lived in the city until her family was bombed out and they were forced to live in the village. The women soon board an unknown train. As she's about to go in the train, two men try to escape but they're shot and killed instantly. This causes chaos and fear rising among the women. The soldiers throw the women into the carriage forcefully where they sadly accept their fates. The women have small talks amongst each other about their ethnicity. There's Hungarians, gypsies and even some Russian women. Iron helps everyone in the carriage struggling to take care of themselves. She treats the deaf girl like her own daughter. It's chilling to the point even your bones might freeze. They finally arrive at their destination. One of the women gets extremely sick as they reach, and Iron asks the guards for help but they have no mercy and no humanity. They try to hit Iron instead but she is saved by the Russian woman who came along with them. The women are dragged along like cattle in the cold. Along the way, they see dead bodies of starved women getting thrown out which makes them fear for their life. Iron is sent to a cabin where she is stripped naked for the doctor to check if she's healthy. She's then injected with some unknown chemicals. She is sent to a bathing place without any of her clothes. She's freezing and her body trembles uncontrollably. What's going on here? She doesn't know but she washes herself with the dirty, bone-chilling cold water as sobs of agony escape her lips. Other women are sent there along with Iron including the little deaf girl. The naked women are thrown into a barn where they find others. They scramble to wear warm clothes and go to bed instantly. The deaf girl whose name is Anna stays with Iron as she's scared. The next day, all the prisoners are placed and the Russian woman translates everything the soldiers say. The Russian soldiers blame these innocent women and men for the destruction Hitler has done. In order to reimburse them, the women are forced to work in mines as slaves. There are rules places for everyone to behave and if anyone so much as tries to break them is starved for three days and punished. The women are petrified but agree to whatever the soldiers say. They're thousands of miles away enraptured in snow with nowhere to run. They are guarded 24-7 and anyone who tries to escape is murdered brutally. The women are to work until the war is over and the buildings are rebuilt. Only then are they allowed to go home. They work tirelessly day and night. Iron accompanies Anna everywhere as she reminds Iron of her own daughter. They work at mines laboriously and are taken back to the camp after their daily quota is complete. With the abysmally inhuman conditions at the camp, Iron's skin tears off with her socks when she's about to bathe. Even the water is frozen. The food's finished and they sleep on empty stomachs. Iron gets Anna a piece of coal to write things down for easier communication. One guard intrigues Iron but she doesn't pay much heed to it. The guards always allot Iron and Anna to work together. Iron sees the guard fighting another one. She observes everything around her. The guard tells her he's a prisoner just like her and his job is to oversee everything. Since Iron and Anna have the most rigorous job, they always work late which means they get no supper. They go to bed empty stomach for days on end. Iron gets irritated as she's forced to skip supper because of Anna. Anna tells her she'll work alone and after three days, Iron gets to have supper. But Anna is late again. The food is finished and her health is deteriorating. 
But Iron has saved some food for her and gives it to her. Iron has a secret admirer who seems to have grown a liking towards her. He gives her spoons to eat from and Iron smiles at the generosity. On the other hand, Eva, the Russian woman gets treated way better than the others and she eats with the generals. Her job is to keep the generals satisfied physically. The next day, Anna gets sick at the mine and Iron goes to talk to the guard whose name is Fabian. Iron hastily gets her to the infirmary with the help of Eva. The nurse checks on her but says there's no room. Turns out, Anna is infected by typhus, a disease spread by fleas. Iron stays up all night tending to her. Iron tries to take care of her but the guards pull the two out of the bed and throw them into the mines to work. Anna can barely stand and needs support. Iron asks Fabian to get her some medicine. Fabian gets a dealer to bring the medicine. Iron gives the dealer her ring in order to get the expensive medicine. But the dealer never comes back. He cheated her and disappeared. On the other hand, Iron is still hopeful but the guard tells them to leave the mine. Iron tells the guard they're waiting for medicine and the guard leaves them in the snow. He tells to come back exactly within 10 minutes or they'd get put to eternal sleep and Iron agrees. As they're waiting out in the freezing cold, Iron spots a wolf. Scared that they might get attacked, Iron carries Anna and runs. But Anna is too weak and she falls to the snow. She dies because of the disease and Iron is heartbroken. It's like her own daughter died. She drags Anna's lifeless body through the snow, but the wolf comes back because of the smell. The wolves come attacking and Iron runs through the snow leaving Anna behind. She runs and runs until a guard finds her. She begs him to go back but he threatens to shoot her. She snatches his gun and other guards come along. She begs them to go to Anna but they knock her out. The next morning, she finds herself in a cell. She tries to get out but can't. She begs for them to get her out but they turn a deaf ear towards her. She suddenly starts hearing noises from beneath the ground. As she digs deeper into the soil, she finds a secret doorway. She quickly goes in and sees her daughter. This is strange. She's back in her own house. Suddenly, her husband comes back from the war and assures her everything is going to be okay. She soon realizes this is all but a dream. The guards get her out of the prison and her health is severely declined. She has got typhus too. The doctor examines her and leaves quickly. At the mines, the man who always admired Iron starts searching for her. To his dismay, he finds out she hasn't come to work for a long time. The man goes to the barn to check on Iron but she isn't there either. He soon goes to the infirmary to find her lying there with all the others who are soon going to die. Iron is still in her dream having a nice time with her family. When the man's voice wakes her up. Iron is scared he might hurt her but he ensures that he'll take care of her. He pays the doctor a handsome price so she gets the care she needs. Iron finds out she's balding due to the severe conditions she has endured. The man comes back and introduces himself as Rajmund. He gives her food to eat and get herself better. Rajmund continues to give her food and medicine and Iron is grateful. He trades cigarettes for food with the guards and visits Iron. He offers to help her get around the place. Rajman confesses he likes her and kisses her. But she says she has a family, to which Rajman tells her to forget them as they're never going back. He adds that there's no god in a place like this. There's no god in hell itself. Iron rejects him saying she's faithful to her husband. Rajman leaves. The next day, as the doctor is treating Iron, the nurse comes in with a serious face. She whispers something serious in the doctor's ear. The doctor's face turns ghastly, and he tells Iron that Berlin's fallen and Hitler has died. The war is over. He tells her that she can go home soon now. Iron is ecstatic to find out. The doctor tells her to rest as she's still very weak. She dreams about her family again, and jerks away when she realizes because dreams are deadly here. She is somewhat healthy and strong again. She gets out of the infirmary but is thrown into the barn by the guard. There's no one inside. She assumes everyone is working and stays there. Soon, the others come in and they check on her. She tells them that the war's over but no one seems to be rejoicing. The women tell her that they aren't allowed to go home anymore by Stalin's orders. Iron is devastated. They try to rebel against this but also realize that it's no use. Iron goes back to work as usual. She meets Rajmund and tells him that she'll do anything to survive. As she promised her daughter she'd go home soon. She tells Rajman nothing will ever happen between them but wants his help. He tells her the rules to survive which are to forget family and not think much, just work. He teaches her how to make cigarettes to get her way at the gulag. He teaches her how to lure the guards as well so that she doesn't have to work much. Iron learns a lot from him. She asks her to bathe every day no matter how cold it is. He introduces her to all the guards and workers there. Rajman even hands the cook some cigarettes to get more food and Iron learns it all. Iron wants to help the others, but Rajman advises her not to in order to save themselves. But Iron asks him why he's not following his own rules. Rajman simply replies that he loves her. At the barn, Eva is no longer wanted by the general as she's sick and they don't want to get contaminated. She asks Iron for help but Iron declines saying she doesn't care about anything else. But returning back to her daughter, this causes a small argument and Eva walks away. One day at work, a whole tunnel collapses on top of Rajmund. Iron rushes to help him and takes him to the infirmary quickly. She hands him as many cigarettes as she has for the doctors to take care of him. She starts loving him too without realizing it. 
Rajman gives Eva her medicine in return for an hour to spend with Iron. They make love at a cabin. It's been four years and Iron is happily living with Raymond. She has ranked higher in work and is now a guard at the mines. She and Rajman sleep together at the barn. She hears commotion one day and runs to the guard to learn about it. What she learns shakes her to her core and she hugs Eva while crying happy tears. Rajmand asks Iron what's happening. They can finally go home now. They all leave the Gilag to go back to their families. Iron and Rajman stay in the train, hand in hand as they head home. The guard there says they all get to go home tomorrow. But there's a problem. Since Rajman is from another place which is now Yugoslavia, he can't go with Iron to Hungary. And Iron can't ever visit Rajmand either since visas won't be granted to capitalist countries. They both decide to declare themselves as Germans to stay together. Rajman's sons are grown now but they plan to get Iron's daughter to them as soon as possible. Rajman sure misses his sons but he also knows he can't live without Iron anymore. He declares himself as German and waits for Iron to do the same. But Iron declares herself as Hungarian. Raymond waits for her but she never comes back. The van starts moving and Raymond loses hope. But then he sees Iron running towards him. He thinks Iron is there to come with him but she's there to say goodbye. Raymond is devastated to leave Iron behind. She gives him a letter that thanks him for his love, and tells him to live without her as she's heading home now. She thanks him for giving her hope. Tears don't stop falling from Raymond's eyes. Iron finally comes home. Her mother is shocked and rejoices at her arrival. Her father welcomes her well, as she learns that her husband passed away at war. Iron's daughter finally gets her mother back, 